Well, we are coming to grips with buying a new car. We know that there are many pitfalls out there, but it could also be a very exciting, brave new chapter in your life. Now, for many of us, I think when we talk about accessibility, buying a second-hand car is where we have to start the journey. What do we need to be mindful of when buying a second-hand car? Yeah, so I think you've got two options when you're buying a second-hand car. You can either go to a dealer, just make sure when you are buying a car from the dealer that there's no extra costs. So if the car has smash and grab windows uh, already uh, uh, installed, kind of in, yeah. you don't really want to go and have to pay extra for that. If you're buying a car privately, just remember that the Consumer Protection Act is very limited to protecting you. So you want to make sure that the car has a service plan or a maintenance plan so that if anything does go wrong that you can actually go and get it sorted out. But most importantly, which we mentioned earlier, is you want to make sure that you're buying a car as close to trade-in value and selling a car as close to market value as possible. Otherwise, you're literally throwing money away. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, cars are already a depreciating asset, so you don't want to throw any unnecessary money away even more. And, and we like to think that by putting those extras in, we're adding to the value of the car. Um, but yeah. at, at what point do we, do we do that? Do we let the dealership, especially with a new car, put the extras in? Do we do it ourselves? What's yeah. the, the most responsible way of approaching something like that? So if you've got the outsourced sort of extras like the smash and grab, the trackers and all that sort of stuff, I would get a quote from the dealer and then I'll get a quote from the, the third party. Because he's got connections. Presumably yeah. they've got those relationships so in place already. Totally. Yeah. So the convenient factor is that obviously he'll get it done a little bit quicker. But if you get a quote from someone else and you know it's half the price, then it's most probably worth your while going that route. Unless you say, listen, I just don't have the time. Yeah. Um, I just have to pay those prices. So it's definitely up to you and, and see. But I would say always try to educate yourself around the costing and see what you're going to get from a best possible deal. I love that. Now, um, I, I, we've all heard about the on-the-road fee. Um, yeah. but a, a bit of a, a, a strange one to wrap your head around. Just explain it to yeah. us. Please. So yeah, so on-the-road costs are pretty much getting the roadworthy certificate, getting the licensing documentation, and pretty much getting the number plates put onto the car. Validating at the end that of the vehicle, day. Yeah. yeah. How much should we be paying for this exercise? Because obviously time involved, if we had to do it ourselves, is a factor, yes, but uh, financially, how much should we be yeah. paying? So if you look at those costs, I mean, uh, a roadworthy certificate could be about 500 bucks, depending on the size of the car. If you look at the licensing documentation, that's about 700 rand. If you then go on to the number plates, you must probably pay about 200 bucks a number plate. So if you add all of that up, you're looking at 1,300 to 1,500 Rand, where the dealers charge anything from 4,000 to 5,000, sometimes even more oh, for yeah. that, for that uh, service. You know, and they feel it's their right. Yeah, I think a lot of people in Cape Town, South Africa, in fact, around the world, when we look at the boom of, of things like Uber and that taxi industry, do we even need a car to wrap up the conversation? In your mind, is it as vital to go and buy a new car as it used to be? Yeah, well, that's a really interesting topic. And we touched on this last time uh, on, on the, the new modern day the taxi services. Yeah. yeah. So the, the more that the, these infrastructures are improving, the less and less we're going to be needing cars going forward, most definitely. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a red blooded South African male. I want a new car, man. I want a new car. Awesome. Grant, awesome to connect with you. Thank you so much for demystifying. Um, I think what can be an awesome, but yes, also quite a dangerous new process. Well, if you're going to go and take that brave new step, all the best of luck, but educate yourself.